session we will be discussing about national income. So, I am back, I am Professor Anuradha Jain with you from Vivekananda Institute of Professional Studies and we will be discussing more about national income in this session. And as you already know that macroeconomics deals with various national aggregates like national income, output, employment, price level, consumption, investment, money supply, balance of payment etcetera, etcetera. National income refers to the money value of all goods and services produced in the country during the year. In other words, the final outcome of all the economic activities of the nation during a period of one year valued in terms of money is called national income. It includes final economic goods both consumer as well as producers whether for self consumption or for exchange. National income does not include any non economic you know activities or any intermediate goods value of any intermediate goods. We can think of different concepts related to national income after making appropriate additions to and deletions from national income. The main concepts which are you know related to national income which we have to understand which we will be dealing in our this session is gross domestic product GDP is the total money value of all final goods and services produced in an economy during a particular year whether by Indian residents or foreigners. According to Lipsey and Crystal, GDP is a specific measure of output in the market economy and is not measure of welfare or happiness. So, it is the goods money value of all final goods and services produced in the domestic territory of the economy. GDP can be computed both at factor cost as well as the market price. GDP at factor cost provides an estimate of the total value of final goods and services produced during the year at the cost of the production. Now, for computing GDP at market price, all final goods and services are valued at their market price and the values thus obtained are added. So, in brief you can say that GDP at market price is equal to GDP at factor cost plus indirect tax minus subsidies. Okay, so, we can uh, you know calculate GDP at market price with the help of these three variables that is GDP at factor cost, indirect tax and subsidies. Similarly, we can calculate GDP at factor cost which can be calculated as GDP market price minus indirect tax and plus subsidies. The second component which is important for understanding national income is GNP that is gross national product. GNP is defined as the total money value of final goods and services produced in an economy during a particular year plus net income from abroad because it is national. So, we are not restricted to the geographical boundary of the country but whatever belongs to our nation will be the part of you know GNP here. So, these goods and services includes consumer goods, services, goods, private domestic investment or goods produced by the government and net exports of goods and services. The difference between GDP and GNP is due to the net factor income from abroad. Now, if the citizens of a country are earning more than what foreigners are earning in that country, GNP exceeds GDP and vice versa. Like GDP, GNP can be computed both at factor cost and at market price. Okay. And GNP, we are including net factor income from abroad because GDP plus net factor income from abroad will give you the GNP. Now, GNP at market price is equal to GNP at factor cost plus indirect tax minus subsidies and similarly GNP at factor cost can be calculated as GNP at market price minus indirect tax and plus subsidies. 
The next component is net domestic product. The concept of NDP or net domestic product is closely related to the concept of GDP because it is derived from GDP. A part of the capital goods is used up or consumed in the process of the production of these goods as depreciation because when we produce goods then the fixed assets value goes down or you can say that consumed in the process of production and the term which we use for this level of depreciation or the decreasing in the value as depreciation. So, NDP can be obtained by subtracting dep depreciation from GDP. So, we can say that net domestic product NDP is equal to GDP minus depreciation and similarly like GDP and GNP that we have discussed NDP can also be estimated at factor cost as well as the market price. So, NDP at market price is equal to NDP at factor cost plus indirect tax minus subsidies and vice versa. Next component is net national product. Net national product is the total money value of goods and services produced in the economy during a year after deducting depreciation plus net factor income from abroad. It is obtained by subtracting depreciation from total value added like NNP is equal to GNP minus depreciation or GNP is equal to NNP plus depreciation and NNP can also be calculated at factor cost as well as market price just same as what we have uh, you know explained in terms of GDP, GNP, NDP and all. So, you can say that there are these four main components of national income that we need to understand uh, that is GDP, GNP, NDP and NNP. Now, next we come to the measurement of national income because how do we measure national income like what is the income of the country, what is the national income of the country. So, for that there are three methods of measurement of national income, one is value added method, then income method and the next is the expenditure method. Now, let us discuss first as value added method. Now, this is also called output method or production method. Now, in this method the contribution of each enterprise to the generation of flow of goods and services is measured. Now, under this method the economy is divided into different sectors such as primary sector, secondary sector and tertiary sector. This method is used to measure national income in different phases of production in the circular flow. So, gross value added at market price that is GVAMP, GVA is gross value added at market price is equal to value of output minus intermediate consumption or value of output of an enterprise is equal to sales plus change in the stock that is closing stock minus the opening stock, the value of all this production. Now, why we are talking about you know net value, why because to avoid double counting like suppose for example, how do we calculate gross value added at market price, value of output like suppose for example, if you are talking about bread. Now, bread is the final product okay, or it may be the final product for the consumer, but intermediate product for the restaurant. Now, if we are taking for consumers as final product of bread, then what is the intermediate consumption? Intermediate consumption is the wheat flour, a fine flour which is used for preparing this bread. Now, at one place already the price of wheat or price of wheat flour is already taken into consideration. But when we are talking about the price of bread, then we have to take what value addition is taken place has taken place in converting this flour into the bread. Like suppose for example, if price of bread is 20 rupees and the price of flour is 10 rupees okay, or pri price of wheat is suppose 8 rupees. Now, initially we take price of wheat that is 8 rupees, then converting this wheat into the wheat flour, 
will create the value of 2 rupees and the price of this wheat flour becomes suppose 10 rupees okay, per kg. So, that means the value addition that has taken place is of 2 rupees. So, we will take 8 rupees as wheat plus 2 rupees okay, as value add of the output or intermediate okay, we are deducting from the wheat flour. And if bread is of 20 rupees then from wheat flour to bread the value addition that has taken place is of 10 rupees. So, where we have option either we take the value of the final product that is 20 rupees or we take value addition at every stage which will also come to the same as 20 rupees like 8 rupees initial value of wheat, 2 rupees when it is converted into wheat that is 10 and from 10 to 20 that means 10 rupees value addition when it is converted into the bread. So, overall it is the 20 rupees then 8 plus 2 plus 10. So, either we take the value of the final product or we take the value of the product minus the intermediate okay, value of the intermediate product. So, that will give the same. Now, what are the steps involved in value added method? First is the you have to identify and classify the production unit. Okay, so, this involves classifying of all uh, producing units of the economy into primary, secondary and tertiary. Second step is estimate gross domestic product at market price. So, the gross domestic product or value of this gross domestic product or you can say that value added of each group is calculated and sum total of all sector gives gross domestic product at market price. Okay, so, you can say that summation or the total gross value added at market price is equal to GDP at market price. Third step involved is calculate domestic income. Okay, so, that means that by subtracting depreciation and net indirect taxes from GDP at market price, we get NDP at factor cost. So, NDP at factor cost is equal to GDP at market price minus depreciation minus indirect tax. So, that we will get at the factor cost. Then estimate net factor income from abroad and calculate national income. So, national income is equal to NNP net national product at factor cost which can be calculated as NDP that is net domestic product at factor cost plus NFIA that is net factor income from abroad. Now, in this method value added method, what are the precautions that we have to take? So, the precaution here is that imputed rent values of self occupied houses should also be included in the value of output okay? because sometimes what we do if it is a self owned, we do not take into consideration okay, the rent of that property or which is used for the process of production. So, therefore, we should take into consideration. Now, though these payments are not made to others, their values can be easily estimated from prevailing values in the market. Second precaution that we have to take is that sale and purchase of second hand goods should not be included in the measuring value of output of a year, because their values are counted in the year of output of the uh, of that product. Okay, because already it was taken once when it was produced. So, when we are buying and selling of uh, second hand products, then that should not be taken into consideration. Otherwise, it will lead to you know double counting and it will not project proper value of your national income. But commission or brokerage earned in their uh, you know sale and purchase should be included because this is a new services rented in the, the current year. Value of services of housewife are not included because it is not easy to find out the correct value of their services. Okay? And, but nowadays, you know, changes are going on and uh, government is trying to include uh, the value of, uh, you know, services of housewife because that contribute a huge value because the argument is that, that if we are hiring maid or if we are hiring cook, for preparing food at home, we give them uh, salary, we give them wages and we include them. But why not the services of housewife should be included? Okay? So, there is good debate that is going on and soon it will be the part of national income because otherwise we are underestimating our national income. 
and value of intermediate goods must not be counted while measuring value added method because this will amount to the double counting. Okay. So, these were the main precautions that to be taken while using the value added method. Now, next method is the income method. This method approaches national income from distribution side. Okay. This method measures national income at the phase of distribution and appears as income paid and received by individuals of a country. Now, under this method, national income is obtained by summing up the incomes of all individuals of the country. Now, what are the main components of uh, income method and in what different ways you know people get income in the country. So, first is the compensation of the employees. So, it refers to the amount to be paid to the employees by employer for rendering their factor services. Okay. So, comp uh, compensation of employees will be equal to wages and salary in cash plus wages and salaries in kind if any plus employers contribution to social security schemes for these employees because that also involve cost and directly or indirectly it is a part of the compensation of the employees. Okay. So, first major component is the compensation to the employees because these are the factor services that are given by the household sector to the industry or to the government. Second component is operating surplus. It refers to the sum total of income from property and businesses. Okay. So, operating surplus is equal to rent plus royalty plus interest plus profit and profits how do we calculate is equal to you know total profits earned by any you know organization after giving you know corporate tax, dividend or retained earnings. So, after reducing this, after deducting this whatever is left to the business house that is the net profit of that organization. Then there might be mixed income and it is income generalized by own account workers. Okay. So, that means they take the part of salary as well as they also take the part of the profit that is the mixed income. So, that is also the component of income method. Now, what are the steps involved in income method? First is identify and classify the production unit same as we have discussed in the value added method. Second is estimate the factor income paid by each unit that means factor incomes paid by each unit can be classified as compensation of employees, operating surplus, mixed income that what we discussed. The next step is calculate domestic income that means summing up all the factor income of all the units gives the domestic income that means net domestic uh, you know product at factor cost is equal to compensation of employees plus operating surplus and plus mixed income. Then after this the next step would be estimate net factor income from abroad that is NFIA and then calculate national income. So, NNP at factor cost will be equal to NDP that is net de uh, domestic you know product at factor cost plus your net factor income from abroad. So, this is how we calculate you know national income with income method, but there are some precautions that we need to take while calculating or while using this method of measurement of national income. First is transfer payments are not included in estimating national income through this method, because transfer payments are not paid against the services. Okay, they are not services rendered in the economy when government pays you know pensions or unemployment allowances and all. So, therefore, these are not to be included in estimating national income. Second, illegal money such as hawala money or money earned through smuggling okay, etcetera are not also included in the national income. Third is windfall gains such as prize money or lotteries are also not included because they are not leading to any production because we include you know these incomes in the national income only when there is a production of goods and services or there is some you know productive or economic activity that takes place. So, 
any windfall gain is not taken into consideration in the national income because these are not creating any product or they are not creating value in the economy. Then uh, death duties or gift tax, wealth tax, tax on lotteries etcetera are paid from past saving or wealth and not from the current income. So, therefore, they should not be treated as part of the national income. Okay. So, next we come to the third method of calculating national income that is expenditure method. Now, according to this method, national income is measured in terms of expenditure made by the consumers on final goods and services produced in the economy during the accounting year. Now, expenditure can be made by private individuals, by households, by government or by business enterprises. So, we add up the following types of expenditure obtained you know through expenditure method. First is the final private final consumption expenditure which refers to the expenditure incurred by household on goods and services. Okay, that expenditure includes uh, expenditure on durable or perishable goods uh, okay, whichever type of you know goods they are purchasing in the economy. Then government final consumption expenditure which refers to the expenditure incurred by the government sector on various administrative services like defense, law and order, education or uh, any other like infrastructure at all. Third component is gross domestic capital formation which refers to the addition of capital stock to the economy okay, that includes purchase of new plants, machineries, houses, property, roads, infrastructure etcetera. Then net exports which refers to the difference between exports and imports of a country during a period of one year. Now, the steps involved in the expenditure methods again we have to identify the economic units incurring final expenditure and all economic units are classified as household, government, uh, producing sectors and the rest of the world that means the foreign sector. Second step is classification of final expenditure and calculate gross domestic product at market price. Okay, so, what is private final consumption expenditure because this includes uh, private final consumption expenditure, government final consumption expenditure, gross domestic capital formation, net exports and when we add up all this then this will give you GDP at ma market price. So, that means GDP at market price is equal to private final consumption expenditure plus government final consumption expenditure plus gross domestic capital formation and plus net exports that is x minus m. Third step calculate domestic income okay, that means NDP at factor cost and for this we can subtract you know depreciation and net indirect tax from GDP at market price and we get domestic income that means net domestic product at factor cost is equal to GDP at market price minus depreciation minus net indirect tax. Then fourth step is estimate the net factor income from abroad that is NFIA and then calculate national income. So, NNP at factor cost becomes NDP at factor cost plus net factor income from abroad. Now, what are the precautions in the expenditure method? First is expenditure made on second hand goods should not be included because this does not contribute to the current year production of the goods and services that same we discussed in the value added method also. Expenditure on purchase of old shares and bonds from other people and from business enterprise should not be included in the expenditure method because they were already purchased that investment has been already made earlier. Third precaution is that expenditure on transfer payments by government should also not be included because no goods or productive services are produced in exchange by recipients of these goods. Okay, because transfer payments is only one side transfer of money and no services are rendered against those transfer payment. So, that will also not be the part of expenditure method. 
Now, let us discuss like what are the difficulties that we face in measuring national income, whether it be any method, okay, whether it may be like value added method, expenditure method or income method. First difficulty that we face is in estimating national income in a developing countries arise because of the prevalence of non monetized transaction in such countries. Okay, there are still you know sectors which are not exactly paying cash or which are non monetized you can say transactions that took, take place and national statisticians therefore, has to face the problem of finding suitable measures of value for this part of national income. Like even in a country like India, you will see that in villages still you know people exchange goods and in villages farmers basically they exchange their crops and they are not doing uh, monetary transactions there and it is very difficult to measure you know those value of those transactions and which may not be the part of national income. Second difficulty that we face is illiteracy in a developing countries and most producers have no idea of the quantity and value of their output and do not follow the practice of you know keeping regular accounts and this make the task of getting reliable information from a large number of you know the small producers in the economy. Third difficulty is in measuring national income in a developing country arises because production both agriculture and industrial is unorganized and scattered in these countries and this does not admit of easy calculation of this national income. Lastly, I would like to introduce the concept of you know green GNP uh, that is green gross national product, green national income because this is very important and recent concept that has been introduced that economists have realized that in national income accounting two aspects or cost of producing GDP need to be incorporated in estimating GDP or national income. So, that it should truly reflect welfare of the people. Okay. These real costs are of two types. First, when producing you know products forms the air and water which adversely affected the welfare of the people. Thus, you know it has been found that while producing goods the firm pollute the river water by dumping their waste in local rivers. And similarly, the factories in the urban areas using oil and uh, coal emit smoke and gas that pollute the air which harms those who live in the surrounding area. Therefore, in estimating real GDP or national income, the cost of pollution of air and water by the firms in the production process of goods must be subtracted to arrive at what has been called green GDP or green G GNP. So, thank you so much for your patience uh, you know listening to this session. Thank you.